Hello and welcome back to another House of Wyvern video. It's been a while since I've done a video, I know. Um, we've just been quite busy trying to sort a few things out. And I should be hopefully putting up some short videos where we've been over the summer. Yeah, just getting back into it really. And I can't really ignore uh, it being October and being the end of the pagan calendar and all. And as some of you may know, I am a Celtic Reconstructionist, which is a branch of Celtic Paganism. So, I've always wanted to go to Nine Ladies. It's been on my list for about, oof, probably about 15 years. And I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to go a week ago. And I'm a big fan of Celtic stone circles and whatnot, this is a big thing for me. I actually visited the area around 15 odd years ago also because I went to a smaller stone circle nearby called Dolteur. Um but we can, I'll talk about that a bit later. So it was a quite nice last trip for, well I would say the end of summer but we're in mid-fall now on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And actually, um, strangely warm for this type and time of year, especially having to go into Derbyshire, where, and these stone circles are actually usually in quite high locations. Usually a bit colder, but no, it didn't affect it today. These stone circles generally popped up around three to four thousand years ago. Uh, they were made during the Stone Age, as a form of uh, tribute to the ancestors and the spirit of the area no one really knows for sure but they were not used they were just built and then left as a way to honor their dead all the spirits of the area and after that they would be somewhat reused in the uh, Bronze Age as a means of burial which by this I mean they would uh, have cremations and burial uh, kists which are essentially a kind of slab burial in the ground where you'd cover it up with stones or a large rock. These areas were never really forgotten so we're talking about two to one thousand years later they would still be uh, known by the local tribes of the area and they were reused to be become burial areas as a way as a way to honor, honor their ancestors um literally by burying instead of just being a um a symbol so something to remember when you go to these sites is that the burials have probably been moved by archaeologists but they are still burial sites so it's something that annoys me about it, especially when it comes to places like Stonehenge and Dolture. I don't really know so much about Nine Ladies, but they have been vandalized. And of course, it's fine to use them by neo-pagans for ritual and whatnot. But I've heard some horror stories in regards to this, like people urinating on Stonehenge, people trying to take bits of rock back to their homes. Um, and especially with Dolce, even last year people were trying to move the rocks and it's being damaged over the years. Dolce has taken a terrible beating over the years. Uh, stones have been destroyed and had to be re-put back together. Some person added an additional 14 odd stones to it for some weird reason, thinking they probably knew better than the <laughs> ancient Kells, but alas, what do I know? The, the, this is the also, the thing with it also. Uh, as you can see, I was trying to get a good shot of nine ladies. Unfortunately, I could only get eight ladies because, well, there were two hippies there that just wouldn't move no matter how. Over the three hours I was there, who just wouldn't move. He seemed, one of them seemed to never leave one of the stones, even when he was talking to people going by. It was very weird. So, yes. Now, a, a story about nine ladies is that it was apparently I've heard two versions 
One is that some women or witches were dancing on a Sunday and were turned to stone. Uh, the other one I heard was that there was a fiddler, as in a violinist, who, who was supposed to be the devil and sat on the flat rock and played and this offended God and they got turned into stone. Regardless, as we all know, <laughs> they like to put these... Christians like to put these stories with their uh, ancient pagan places. But alas, here we are. So Dolcheur, like I said, I visited there 15 odd years ago. And it has a very good place in my heart because with nine ladies, it's... With nine ladies, it's... You're always going to be... There's always going to be people there. And there's a lot of places where people have set fires around it. Uh, bon uh, campfires and whatnot. And eh, it makes the place look a bit untidy. But I guess if it doesn't affect it, it's fine. The other thing with it is there's always going to be people there. You, you never really get a moment to just take in the atmosphere and enjoy it and... I don't know. Just relax, really. These places have somewhat of a power to them and that's just the way it is. Uh, so if you're in the area, I recommend visiting Nine Ladies because there's a few things around it, but five minutes down the road is Dolce and nobody goes there. It's in a picturesque area, it's, in a, it's on the outskirts of woodland, it's slightly fenced off and no one really knows about it, so it's a lot more private and you can just relax and enjoy the atmosphere there. Then I'm going to have to use pictures because I didn't actually go, but I've only got pictures from my visit a few years ago, or I can take some from Wikipedia. It is a bit smaller, yes, but um, I'd say if you just want to not be around <laughs> the, the hippies, you can go there. Anyway, I'll catch you later. <laughs>